So in prior videos, I explained how you can build a native bee condo from pieces of scrap wood in your shop. My own experience is specific to leafcutter bees that live in my neighborhood located in the Tucson Mountains in Arizona. This is my second year of raising native bees, so in this video, I'll summarize how I harvested my first batch and lessons learned from the same. To briefly recap, you don't have to make your bee condo out of anything fancy. For example, this is a juniper log saved from a wetlands restoration project in the Canelo Hills here in southern Arizona. It took about 10 minutes to drill these holes out to a depth of 6 inches. And with respect to design, just remember that if you don't provide protection from the rain, just angle the holes of the condo slightly down so that they don't become traps for rainwater. To improve chances for pollinator success, I converted high water use areas of my yard, in my case a former vegetable garden, into rainwater harvesting basins that require less water and which can host native low water use plants better suited to native bees and other local pollinators like butterflies and moths. I consulted with my local nursery for recommended native plants and I can't say enough good things about desert survivors here in Tucson who really know their stuff. But if you prefer, native bees are also excellent pollinators for vegetable gardens. With that recap behind us, let's get into my first experience harvesting leaf cutters and lessons learned from the same. So I've had this on my back um, table here for a little while to keep it in the shade to give me enough time to harvest. And I think they're already starting to come out because I can see one chamber has been opened up. So I'm gonna harvest these right now and keep them cold long enough for me to be able to replace the straws. All right. Oh, wow. These are in there kind of tight. It's kind of hard to do this one-handed. So there's the straw. I'm gonna get these out and replace the straws ASAP so that the uh, bees have somewhere safe to come back to. And the reason I'm replacing these straws with fresh ones instead of just leaving them alone is I don't want any parasites or diseases to transfer from one generation to the next. So here are the bees that I was successfully managed to pull out of the bee condo. And it looks like they kind of chewed away a little bit at the end of the hole because I can see some sawdust in there. Um, one of these actually has, if I can find it now, oh, right here. There's the baby right there. So I'm assuming that that's a female because uh, this is the front of the straw over here. And from what I understand, the females are laid towards the end of the straw. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave this little baby alone, put it in this box and uh, put it in the fridge so that um, uh, I can uh, keep them dormant for a little bit longer uh, until I'm ready to release them in my backyard. Okay, folks, and here they go into the fridge into my own little personal drawer down at the bottom. So we're going to put them in there until we're ready to return and let them go.
is that? Interesting. I don't know. Maybe it's a new, uh, a new nest. So here's a quick summary of lessons learned from my first two years experimenting with bee habitat where I live in the Tucson mountains. For the condos, I used a 12 inch, 2164 inch diameter drill bit with holes drilled about six inches deep to properly seat my harvesting straws. But you could probably get away with a more common 3 8 inch diameter bit. In retrospect, I observed these leaf cutter bees are too delicate to separate from the straws as recommended when harvesting. So I wouldn't bother with the straws at all since they repopulate their old straws regardless of fresh ones being nearby, perhaps because of a scent that's left behind. Having said that, if you want to raise some leaf cutters for friends, paper straws provide an easy way to safely harvest these little guys. Just keep them cold until you can get them into their new home. I've had luck placing my condo in areas that are shaded or get morning sun. In my case, they were hosted on a northeast facing wall, although they also appear to do well when moved to a southeast facing wall under a patio that is shaded most of the day. Patios also seem to provide added protection from skittish predators like woodpeckers and also rain. Of course, it doesn't hurt to host some water and desert natives nearby, especially if you live in an urban part of town that just has less desert plants that uh, they might be used to. Last thing I'd suggest is try to avoid any kind of synthetic herbicides or pesticides around your home. In my own HOA, which is sensitive to wildlife habitat, oddly we still apply herbicides to common areas, so I request each year that these not be applied in front of my own home, preferring to pull weeds by hand rather than risk further challenges to native species or pets and kids that might track this stuff into homes. Needless to say, take a little time to enjoy these fascinating little critters. It's really relaxing to unplug from news or social media cycles and just study these bees as they work on your garden. Furthermore, they seem to be oblivious to nearby humans, preferring to focus on their babies and their homes. In the last two years of following these bees around my small yard, no one in my family has ever been stung. If you've watched this video all the way to the end, thanks for your interest in making a little habitat available for desert pollinators in general. And if you enjoyed, please subscribe for updates and or share a thumbs up. Thanks.